Hey guys, I'm John Setzler. Welcome back to Man Cave Meals. Today we're going to have a look at this $350 chamber sealer I picked up on eBay. So let's get started. I've been wanting to get a chamber sealer for quite some time and I just really couldn't justify the cost. The VacMaster uh, 210 that I like so well is $900, give or take, depending on when and where you buy it. And somebody introduced me to these cheap uh, Chinese chamber sealers that are found on eBay. And I got this one for $350. And it's specced out almost identical to a VacMaster 210. I don't know who the actual manufacturer is on this unit, uh, but I do know the model number is DZ-260C. And there's some information you can find online about these. And the first thing I did, obviously, when I decided to look into this is I came here to YouTube to try to find some informational video on it. And there's very little out here. And there's even less that's spoken in English. So I figured I'd do an in-depth walk around of this thing and a little demo of it just to get some uh, information out. When you unbox this thing inside the chamber, uh, you get an, a little paper instruction manual, a screwdriver, a hex key, and this looks like some extra material that goes over the sealer bar. And I'm not really even sure what that is, but it's probably related to the sealer bar also, so I'm just going to hang on to all that. It also comes with the power cord. What this machine does not come with that you need is some vacuum pump oil. And if you read the fine print, on the eBay ads it tells you that so I was aware of that and I ordered some from Amazon to use in this machine and it didn't take much and it's real easy to get to there's just one screw on the back of the machine you have to pull out with that hex wrench and then the top lifts up and there's a very easy uh, access oil port and there's a window on the port that you use to judge how much to put in and it shows you all that went very smoothly and very simply and uh, couldn't ask for a whole lot easier. I know that the higher end versions of this thing are maintenance free where you don't have to worry about that, but for $350, that's something you have to deal with. The front control panel on this unit looks uh, a lot like all the other ones that are on the market. You've got several options you can set here, and by pressing the set button, you uh, set your vacuum seal time, or your vacuum time, and this one, uh, let me have a look here. This one goes, let's see where it maxes out. It looks like it'll go way on up to uh, 99 seconds. And it looks like you can set it down anywhere from 0 to 99 seconds. So it's got a really wide range. Uh, I'm going to set it probably at 45 seconds to start with. And then the next option you set is your seal time. And I'm going to use, this, use the information from VacMaster on sealing bags. So we're going to set the seal time to 1.2 seconds. And then we're going to set the cooling time to 1.0 seconds. And we're going to test uh, some vacuum sealing. And when it comes back here, it's either going to say ED or it'll be a double dash. And that just means that it's ready to go. So once you have your material inside the sealer, from this point, you just press the start button and it starts doing its thing. So let's get something to seal. Uh, this chamber sealer also does not come with any bags of any kind. So I went to Amazon and I bought a box of a thousand eight by 10 bags just to get started. And one of the reasons I wanted a chamber sealer is because these bags are cheap. I got a thousand of these for like $43. So it's uh, 4.3 cents per bag which is a big savings over your typical food saver style bags okay I think the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna seal up one of these bags with those extra tools that came with the uh, vacuum sealer uh, I just put these in one of these 8 by 10 bags and what you do here is you raise this bar up you lay your bag top across the sealer where it extends out just past the edge of the sealer bar there and you put your bag back down or put the bar back down close the lid one of the things I found here is that when you start this seal 
you want to kind of hold that lid down until the suction gets started. So we're going to start it. And it's pumping the air out. It's going to go for 45 seconds here, which is where we set it. And we'll just watch it as it goes. It's going to suck all of the air out of the chamber itself. And that's what it's doing now. And I'll run this again where you can see what the gauge up front is doing. It shows you how much air is being sucked out. And once it gets all that air out to that time we set, which I think we set at 45 seconds, the sealer bar is going to activate. It's going to come up and put a seal on the bag. And then it's going to let all the air back into the chamber. So we're about six seconds, five, four, three, two, one. There goes the sealer bar. And then you can see as it lets all the air back into the chamber, it seals that bag. And once the light up front goes out and it comes back to that ED status, we can raise the lid. And we've got a super good seal on that bag. It's got a nice wide seal across the front of the bag and super vacuum. There's uh, no air left in there whatsoever. It does a super job. Okay, we're going to set up another one here. I've put a jar of my uh, King Arthur diastatic malt powder in one of the bags just to have something to seal. And we're going to bring the bar back down just like that, just like we showed before. We want that sealer bar, the bag to be covered over the sealer bar. And then I'm going to close the lid. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like up front. So here we are at the control panel. We're not going to change any of the settings. We're just going to hit the start button. And I hold down the lid just a little bit to let that suction get started. It doesn't do as well as maybe some of the higher end ones. It may You may not have to do that on a, on a vac master. I don't know. But this one, you need to give it a little help to get started. And the lid does not raise automatically on this one when it's done either. But you can see the gauge working there. And uh, I figure anywhere in the green there, you're good to go. And it doesn't really take it that long to get there. We set it for 45 seconds and let it count down. And it's getting almost all the air out of there. And here we are with 10 seconds left. It's going to keep on going. And you'll get to watch the sealer bar and the cool down timers go as it hits there. And then it lets the air back in the chamber. And then it's uh, still letting air in there. And once it returns to that ED status, we can open the lid. Okay, here we are opening the lid. And this is another kind of testament to how much vacuum you get out of this. Uh, we've got a really tight seal on there. You can see that it's actually deformed my canister. It sucks so much air out of there. So I'll just take my knife here. We'll cut that back open. And uh, once we cut that open, it let my canister come back to its fairly normal shape. I'll open it up and get that back together. But it does a pretty neat job. It's a good, doing a real good job there. One of the other supposed great things here about a chamber sealer is your ability to vacuum seal liquids. Uh, since it's not sucking air out of the bag and it's sucking air out of the chamber, it does a good job with liquids. So I'm taking one of these bags and I've got about 12 ounces of water here that we're going to put in there. You just want to be careful not to let any of it spill into the machine when you're setting this up. So I'm going to lay it right across the sealer bar again and put the handle, put the bar back down over it. And we'll close the lid. And we'll run a seal on that a bag of water. And I haven't changed any of the settings. I just left it at 45 seconds, which when you're sealing something liquid, you might be able to get away with a lot shorter time because there's not really that much air to take out of the bag. And it's pretty much fully sealed there after about 15 seconds, or it's got enough of the air out. You might even get to see the water boil as the uh, pressure lowers in the chamber, that water could uh, actually boil in that bag. 
I don't know if you can see it here or not, but there's bubbles forming in there. Uh, if I set a longer vacuum time on it, it would definitely boil. It's only got six seconds to go. So it's boiling at room temperature. So here we go with one second. It's sealing the bag. And then it's letting the air back into the chamber. And then we can open the container back up. And you've got a perfectly sealed bag of water there with no extra air in it whatsoever. Well, there is, there's one little air bubble in there. So that's something I'll play around with. Uh, but that's one of the nice things about this compared to something like a chamber or like a channel sealer. Since we're not sucking air out of the bag, it's not sucking the moisture out of the bag at the same time. One of the other nice features here is the ability to seal jars. And I've got a couple of small jars here that we're going to try. And you just set the lid on there and screw this top on just loosely. You don't, you probably don't even have to have that part on there for this to work. But I'm going to set these on here and just put them on loosely. But the jars can't be tall enough to where you can't close the lid with them standing up so it's going to be a fairly small jar so I've gone ahead and changed the setting here we don't need to run the sealer bar on this so I set the seal time and the cool down time to zero so uh, from here we'll start the sealer and it's still on 45 seconds so this is a task where if you've got something that would crush in a, in a vacuum seal bag, something that's soft that the vacuum would actually crush or damage, you can seal it in these small jars instead and uh, you don't have to worry about crushing it. I saw a demo on YouTube where somebody used some some of those uh, styrofoam packing peanuts inside one of these jars and compared that to doing it inside a vacuum seal bag. They crushed flat in the vacuum seal bag but they stayed fully intact inside the jar. So. These jars have about seven seconds to go here, so we should get a nice tight seal on that here in about three, two, one. Okay, the chamber has replenished its air, so we will lift the lid and take a look here at these jars. Well, that one didn't get much of a good seal. This small one did. I must not have had that one set on there properly, but this this small one has a really solid seal. I can't even pull it off. I'm going to have to get something to pry that one back off. So the small one worked, the large one didn't. I'll try that one again and see what's going on. I may have had a I may have a defective lid on that. So guys, there's your quick rundown of my new cheap $350 chamber vacuum sealer. This is a demo and a walkthrough. I'm not gonna call this a recommendation at this point. Uh, I'm probably gonna come back and do another review of this product in about six months after I've had a chance to put a lot of use on it. But from what I've seen so far, I'm happy. But I've only sealed uh, 10 or 15 times with this thing so far. I haven't had any trouble with it, but I don't have any time with it yet either. But from what I've seen, as of today, I'm happy. Uh, we'll see how that comes out in six months. So if you have any questions about this or anything specific you'd like to know about this particular model, leave me a comment. Let me know. I'll try to answer every question that you throw my way on this because I'm stoked if this thing holds up. Otherwise, this is what I'd call a $350 gamble. But uh, it's a gamble I was willing to take this time. It's not something I do very often. So until next time, this is John Setzler with Man Cave Meals.